<laughs> Cheers, Jean, to your elbow doing better. Cheers to Michelle, to her hips doing better. Cheers to Karen. I hope your knee's doing better. Cheers, everybody. Hello, good to have you. Take an inhale, and we are going to take a breath of full, vibrant wellness. And then when you're ready, let your arms come up. Now we're going to catch the hands if you can. Let's take one of our very favorite postures, Half Moon. Breathe into the rib cage that you're exposed to the sky. If you care to add on a foot cross, you can. If you want to pull, good morning, good morning, good morning. And you can even add on a hand coming down. You can add some rotations. Stretch out the shoulders, stretch out the sides. We're going to take another inhale and go up and then let's go over. Now both arms can catch, you can hold on, you can even pull, breathe. Oh, it can feel the space opening up from shoulder to hip. The spaces between the ribs opening up. If you would like to add on your foot coming over, you can add that. Now the whole lateral chain is getting some attention. Any kind of rotation you're craving, let's open this up. Good. Breathe in. And isn't that wonderful just to wake up that body? Now we're going to be coming back to center. Samasti to he. That a girl? Yep, hand down. Yep, do all the things. Did I do the hand down? Did I do this? Let's just do it a little bit more. Right, Karen? Go over just a little bit more to make sure. You got all the variations, and then we're going to be coming up. We got lost in the moment. It feels so good. And then notice how you feel. We're going to take an inhale to go up and even back. So there is a bit of a back bend here. And then on the exhale, come down. Now, you can meet me in a down dog, or if you would like to do a small vinyasa, you'll bend the elbows. You'll, you'll come into an up dog. Lift the hips out of push-up down dog. So we are meeting in down dog. Bend one knee and then bend the other. I'm going to take off this wrap and that way you can see the body form. Your hands are pushing into the floor so the hips go further behind you. Now one heel gets attention down and then the other. You can also lift both heels and lower the heels. We're doing a little vinny yoga here in this down dog Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now leave the heels low and hold five, four, three, knees can straighten more, heels might go down more, and then you're going to come up to your feet. You can step or walk up there. Now as your blood pressure is ready, you're going to go up and even back into a back bend here. Inhale and exhale, hands come to your heart. Now lift and spread your toes when you're in Samasitahi. Lift up your right foot and go into a tree pose. Now once you feel settled, you can go all the way up to a long arm tree. We're going to be doing a few things here. Now that breath, the breath, I want to add a little bit more cueing here. It's in through your nose if you can. It's filling up both right and left sides of your diaphragm, ribs, and high chest and back. If you care to add on a shoulder opener, you can add that on here. You have a soft drishti, a soft gaze. Uh, usually it's good to have it in front of you, a spot that's parallel to your eyes that does not move. Beautiful, good morning. Take an inhale, and then as you're ready, the arms can come up, the palms can come together. Hello, Susie. If you would like, uh, you can lower your foot. We started off with some half moon stretches and some down dogs, but we'll, uh, you'll, we'll join in as your body's warming up. This other side, tree, we did one tree as well. Breathe it, let the arms lift. Good. And then you can glide the scapula down the back. You're welcome to find that drishti or that focal point. 
a lot of times it'll help if it's on an object that's eye level that doesn't move. Those of you that wanted to add that second variation of that cow face, you can add that here. Now we're going to return to that full breath. If you can, breathe in your nose, belly, ribs, heart. Beautiful. And take that inhale. And then on your exhale, that's right, Jean, your hands can go up. They can catch a sentiment of calm right in that bubble between the palms and bring that calm back down to your Anjali Mudra, thumbs touch the heart, lower that foot, Samastitihi. Good, that's a, another way to say homeostasis, so come back to full biology, breathing, and neutral bl blood pressure. We're going to take another one. I'm going to turn so you can see. You can lift and spread your toes, again, just setting that foundation and awakening the arches. The right arm can come up and back behind you. The right foot or the right ankle can be in your hand. I'm going to turn again. We're going to take a couple poses here as an option. So the first is just a quad stretch. Ribs down, pubic bone up, hips level. And you're releasing tension anywhere in the body you don't need it. For example, the jaw. If you care to add on closer to Natha Rajasana or dancer, you could add on the foot pushing into the hand. And think about that thigh coming up more behind you than you are tilting forward. Ideally, your hips are level. That a girl. You might even have to chin tuck so that neck feels like it's in a neutral position, a gentle extension. Breath is full. Now as you're ready, you're heading back towards that quadriceps stretch so you feel that dynamic balance. Your hands start coming to the heart your foot comes down, samasitihi. Feel that energy rush through your body. And right now you might feel one side's more open than the other. So just notice how it feels. Now the other side, here we go. Go inhaling. This is sort of like a vini yoga move. When you add this movement before you add this more static posture. None of the postures are really static though because we're breathing and we're adapting to the new muscle length. But you're holding in this vertical quad stretch, a little bit of rib tone, a little bit of pubic pulling up so that your uh, low back is a safe lordosis, not an extreme lordosis, a neutral, your neutral natural lordosis. Now that breath, full right left side of belly, full right left side of ribs, full right left side of chest, upper apex of the lungs. Push through that foot so your hip doesn't come out. Really adduct that hip. If you are adding on, your foot might push into your hand more. Your thigh might come up behind you. You might have to adjust the gaze down a little. Full breath. Soft jaw. We're going to take another inhale, and as you exhale, you're slowly coming back. Your hands are at the heart and your foot comes down. 
Samastitihi. Beautiful job. Grab a sip if you'd like. We try to do 8 to 12 ounces during class if that works for you. You want to listen to your own body. If you don't tolerate liquids well during movement, then don't. Make sure to do it after. But otherwise, we're going to be adding on. Take that inhale and come up with your torso, up with your arms. And then exhale, lower down. Now, the option is to meet me in down dog, meet us in down dog, or if you want to take one vinyasa, you're welcome to. So if you are, you're bending your elbows, you're coming into up dog, your exhale is you're coming into down dog. Now, we were already here, so this time we're just going to pick up the left foot and push the right heel. If you have wrist issues, you could come down to your forearms. Otherwise, we're just trying to get an isolated calf stretch as our... Uh, one of our main objectives. Now take the other foot on the floor and pick up the right heel and press the left heel down. Hands push away the floor. Hips are pushing back. Both heels come down again. This is a down dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then you're going to lower your shins down. We're heading down to a belly down position, so make sure you have enough space. You're going to be taking the hands out of this for the Shalabhasana. So the hands are going to reach down, palms face the floor. And your belly has a little lift, like a little piece of ice underneath your abdominals for transverse engagement. Here we go. Breathe in. And let that inhale facilitate your extension. Let that inhale help lift you up. Y'all keep going. I've just got to adjust my mic. All right, come up. Now, once you're up, you can imagine you're in a beautiful body of blue water and you're just floating. You'll have this little natural lift with every inhale. If you care to add on, lift up your toes as well. The whole back body is getting some beautiful contraction. The front body is getting an opening. Add a little scapular retraction so your scapula gently pull together. Now take another inhale. And you can rest for a moment, either just resting or bend the knees and windshield wipe. We're going to be adding on to this. The next position is that the hands could come at the lumbar spine. So if you're feeling a bit tight, you would just rest one hand on the other around the low back and open up the shoulders. If you can tolerate your fingers interlacing and pulling down lower, please do. If you don't tolerate either of those, just leave your hands by your side. So what I see looks good. You're lifting up. That's terrific. Good. You're doing great. I see you. Keep going, breathing in. Feel that breath lift you. Yep, breathe in. And this is subtle, but Jean, your right shoulder might be able to open a little bit more. Just a tiny bit. Yep, that's it. That was it. And that looks more even. I have a fabulous front view of you. And then relax here. Now, an option is to change which hand you have. So if you have if you were in the low back position, now your other hand's on the bottom, your other hand's on top. If you were in the interlaced position, your other pinky's on the outside. If none of that makes sense, just get yourself in a shoulder opener that works for you and come up. Here we go. Breathe. And you will notice you can go a little higher. You can pretend there's a string attached to your hands helping you lift, or someone's giving you an assist under each shoulder, lifting you up, even through right, left. Breathe. And then relax here. Now, you can do a windshield wipe, or if you're craving a child's pose, push back. I'm going to also add a toe stretch for this child's pose. The feet are so important. The feet mobility are so important for the low back. So that I'm adding on this foot stretch. Your heels are straight up and down if you'd like to add that. Five, four, three, two. And then you're going to come back out to that belly down position. 
and we're going to be adding on the arms this time and it, that way you know you have the layer of without your hands if you need a modification. So when you lift up you are hovering without your hands at first and then we're going to let our hands help us. Press and come up. Good. Now you can notice where you feel like your shoulder blades are down the back, the elbows are low. Good. Find a place, adjust if you need to. Good, that looks great. Now we add that breath. Breathe in fully. Belly, ribs, heart. Yep. Inhale. Lower down, take your time, and I'm glad you listened to your body. I want you to have permission to come out anytime you need to. And I would like to also offer that you just notice how it feels. So each posture has its own feeling or energy behind it, and certain breaths are easier. So we're gonna just feel it. Inhale, lift up your upper back without your hands, then your hands assist you higher. Find your place, you can even close your eyes. That helps sometimes really tap into how does it feel Breathe in deeply through your nose. How does this extension feel to you? Oh, you guys look great. Take another inhale. Exhale, lower down. You're doing really good. We're going to do one more. Extensions are so powerful. And rest for just a moment as you need. And here we go. Breathe in. We're going to inhale. That's it, Jean. Good. It it's, uh, feels so good. We're going up. Hold up. Breathe. You can eye, close your eyes and really tap into it. Karen, your back's looking better. Better, better, better. Breathe. that inhale and exhale lower down really good guys now if you care to take garbhasana child's pose you can push back if you need another rep uh, pose of reprieve please take it in garbhasana I'm offering the toes under if you would like one more stretch for your feet you can come up to a high kneel and you can even take toe crush asana behind you. Let me move away from my Pilates chair and lift up. So please find your reprieve. This is your class. Five, four, good. Love it. Three, two. We'll take that inhale and then exhale. Good. Come back to a wide finger downward dog and walk out the legs. Walk out the feet. Take a moment. Right and left right and left right and left now both heels press take an inhale and we're going to shift to a plank lower yourself down by carefully slowly bending your elbows now once you're down you're very prepped for danyarasana you can bend both knees and reach one hand to one foot and one hand to the other We'll be taking this twice, so if you cannot take both feet this time, we're gonna, don't worry, we're gonna do the other side. So get ready, open up with your Dhanurasana. Again, you can close your eyes and feel the pose. Breathe in. Now relax when you're ready. Notice how that side or that body feels. 
We're going to be doing the other side or both again when you're ready. Here we go. Grab your foot or if you're doing two again, take both. Here we go. Inhale up. You're playing a game of tension relaxation. How little tension can you have even though you are using your muscular strength, but you don't want it in your neck or your jaw. Go back into breathing. Inhale. And as you exhale, come back, either a down dog or a child's pose to counter pose. You choose. Uh, your, your offer is to take a release that you need. Five, four, three, two. Now on the one, we're gonna be doing a cat cow. The hands are underneath the shoulders and the knees are underneath the hips. Right away, make sure that your knees are happy so that you're never compromising your joints for a mobility, a strength, a flexibility exercise. So everything that lets your nervous system really focus on the task at hand as well. There's a scapular glide that comes down with the inhale and the extension. There's a scapular protraction and forward that comes with deflection. Inhale and exhale. Our goal is articulation of the spine, but you will feel that good healthy scapular movement. Now we're going to take a more neutral back position, but I want you to add on about five hip circles. So you might think of a magic marker on your pelvis and that you're drawing as large a circle as you can on the wall behind you. This will get some angles that you maybe didn't get. <laughs> now go the other way. Your hip is doing circles. Good. Lateral flexion. It's flexing. It's good. It's getting anything you need. Mm -hmm. One more uh, rehab, prehab one. You're in neutral. Lift up your right toes. Look over your hip. Now same right toes are up. Look over your left hip. So this is over your right hip and over your left hip. One more time, right hip, looking over your left hip, put the right toes down, pick up your left toes, look over each side, each shoulder, and it's the same foot, yeah, so I know it's tempting to want to change, but so we did the right foot three times, and now we're doing the left foot three times. Now just for a moment, get off your hands. You can uh, release them in, a, in any kind of pose that gets you off, relax. And then either do the down dog, or excuse me, either do the cat cow articulation, or if you would care to add on, you can take a down dog, up dog articulation. It's a mini vinyasa, a mini flow. You'll lift your heels, you'll push your low back up, you'll push your middle back up, you'll push the upper back up, and you'll come into an extension. Please know you can do this in bridge, you can do this in cat cow. I just want you to find your articulation challenge, upper back, middle back, lower back, heels. Inhale, undulate the spine, lower back, middle back, upper back. Open up your heart. Good. Inhale. Good. Tuck. Flex. Just two more. So we're doing roughly five, but you're listening to your body and you're doing whatever modification or challenge you need. Inhale. Good. Exhale. That a girl. Enjoy each part of your spine getting attention, getting a focus. One more. Inhale. Heart opens. Exhale. Now when you're ready, lower both shins. And again, onto your joints. I'm going to offer Mandukasana, which is a frog pose. And there is a backup plan of doing a bound angle by the Kanasana. So your knees are happy. And that means if you need some cushion, please take it. I'm looking at you, but if you have a good position, you're going to put your arms down on your hands. I'm looking at you to make sure no one needs any cueing. Yep, you're good. You can rest. 
your head, Jean, you look great. Karen, you look good. Every, uh, Susie, you look good. Betty, I can't see you, but I know you well enough to know that you know how to find this. Good. And Michelle. So there are so many variations on this. I want you to really tap into your body wisdom. You can move forward a bit. You can move back a bit. You can put your big toes towards each other. You can leave them out to, to perpendicular. You can tilt your tailbone under. You can tilt your tailbone up. So you have a basic theme and now your body, you, you and your body are gonna communicate onto what you need today. And if you're like me, there's more than one position that feel really good and useful. Yeah, you too. Okay, now we're resting. Let that body rest. Let it release tension in the hips. Breathe fully, breathe in. Four, three, two, inhale, and then exhale to come back up, slide into all fours quadruped. Let your right foot up, reach your left hand to your foot or ankle and press up. Quadruped on your asana. Inhale and let the hand and the knee down. And then take the other quadruped on your asana. Yeah. Your knee might go higher, Betty. Uh, yep, it usually does. That a girl. That's good. As long as it feels good to you. Relax that. Now in this all fours, I want to offer, I'm going to turn. Right fingers and left fingers are going to face the walls. So watch this. My arms are both. They're both bilaterally. I know there's one called thread the needle that is probably coming to mind. This one is different. So uh, dragonfly, both hands. Now I'm going to shift my weight forward so I can get a shoulder stretch with some weight. Now the head could turn, your hips are in the air, and you might be able to walk your fingers out more. This is a shoulder stretch. Try flipping your hands up or flipping them down and see what gets you. I'm only going to pop up because I want to see you. Yeah, good. We haven't done this one in a couple weeks. There is a decompression of the spine that I'll show from the side because your hips are higher, but both arms are walking out. We'll do the other side in a moment, but at this moment, the right arm's a little in front of your left. And feel that shoulder stretch, rear belt. Breathe fully. There's also a little space between the scapula. The rhomboids opening. Inhale, come back up, and you can just shift. Now, the difference is your left arm's in front. So now my left hand's in front, and I'm going to walk out both. Good. This one is 
locking out both, locking out both, locking out both, so you can't lock your fingers anymore, then you're probably the left side of your head's going to come down. And then either flip your hands up or down to see what works for you for a stretch. Breathe. Take another inhale, and then come back up, and you can flip your feet in front. Actually, grab a sip before we do our next shoulder opener. Get that hydration, maybe 8 to 12 ounces a class. That's what we shoot for, at least. The next one, your legs really can be a lot of ways. I do tend to like them long on the rack, just because I can counterweight the long upper body, the arms. So go up and the fingers are pointing back. Soften that elbow and then go up, 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 up tall, and then the arm, or excuse me, the hand, fingers are facing back. Now, the elbows are easy to hyperextend here, so soften them, then lift your heart. Here we go, find your rack posture, upper back, shoulders, Betty, that looks so good. Look at everybody's postures getting so good. Lift your heart. Now that breath, breathe into your nose, belly, ribs, heart. The heart has a chance to get more breath here, so feel the upper right and left side of your chest. Really get that accentuated inhale. Two more. And then gently relax. Nice, good. I want to give a couple of wrist stretches. I want you to find the, the way that's seated most comfortable for you, however that is. In fact, I'm just going to change it to show that's your business, what you do with your lower body. So we're going to take a finger down and pull. That a girl, Betty, I'll be able to see you better. So just drop the shoulders. Now, let me give you a backup plan, Susie. You'd like this one better. Like people find uh, in a lot of stretches, what do they do better? So you can do this or this. I just want you to feel a front stretch. And then here's another one. Or you can drop it. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. And then a palm down. Again, you could do these here. I just want you to find the stretch. Here, I want you to be comfortable in your hips, in your knees, because the, the, uh, the focus is our upper, our, our wrist. And then I like uh, crossing the hands, so it's kind of like an X right here, and then hold hands with yourself. And you're gonna pull with your top hand, pull the bottom arm back, drop your shoulders. And you can do it. I, I've experimented both ways. You can do it both. Switch. You can let that bottom arm pull your other wrist into a stretch. And then, like I was experimenting the other day, I could feel it in both, so maybe I'm just tightening my wrist, but see if you feel it. This is one more that's kind of more for the ulnar, but you're going to be taking the thumb to the first finger and just flip your eye, uh, flip your fingers so they're under your jaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. You might have to root. get rid of those. Break an inhale. 
Now I want you to find whatever is good for your body to sit and we're going to take one more shoulder release before we move on and that's prayer pose. Now um, I know Karen the prayer pose is better for you in the front body so you know you're welcome to do this or if your prayer pose is better for you in the back body try to push your palms together I'm just turning so you can see and try to work the fingers up. Now notice from the side I want to open my shoulders. Yeah there you go. I can see that. That looks really good. So I love it. That looks good. I can see. Now try to push the base of your knuckles together on the palms or Karen low as you need to. Five, four, three, two, inhale, and then exhale. Let that go. Good job. Uh, take a sip. We're going to come down and do some hip openers. So we're going to be taking a step for a moment. You can take about five counts to come down if you like that little controlled roll down inhale and then an exhale to roll down. And if you're like me and you, you want to uh, have some props nearby, you're welcome to. So if you want a foam roller and you want a Dynavan handy in case you were to need them. When you're down, take that right ankle to left thigh, another prop that might be nice. I know Karen, you like the pillow under your head on this one. So your hip is in a, an, oh, ex, an external rotation here. You might rock a little right and left. And everyone looks good. Again, try that breath. This is a nice one to move the ankles to and the toes. You might do rolls, points, flex. Close the eyes, enjoy. And really tap into how it feels to care for your body and to care for your mind. We're gonna be adding on a possible teapot pose. So if you would like to add that on, you'll just keep on rolling over. Your right foot's gonna end up on the floor. The right arm can go out like a T or a Y. The left hand can even push that thigh away. Yes, very good. And then relax here, breathe. We're going to take another inhale. Notice how wonderful that feels. And then release back up. Now, you can take one hand really lightly to your knee. I always want to encourage that if you're touching your knees, you're light on them. You're not adding any extra, extra force here, but just a little femur circulation here. You feel how that hip feels so much better than the other? Now we're going to take the other side, the ankle goes to the thigh, you're reaching your hands through. If your knee feels at all unstable, one little trick is to pull the pinky toe back and that helps to stabilize the femur on the tibia. So that might work for you, you want to check in and see. If you have neck tension, there's a little trick where you just kind of rock your head right left or nod your head yes no or draw little no circles so being on the floor is powerful because it lets you relax more than when you're standing or sitting so take advantage let your exhales release tension that's anywhere in the body the jaw the mind the scalp move the ankle toes we want mobile ankles for flexibility uh, in the back and for balance Notice how that feels for you. You're welcome to just stay in this stretch. There's so many nice angles you can get just by kind of moving left, right, 
or if you're interested in adding on a variation, you could go into the teapot and you'll just kind of roll over till your foot sole, your left foot sole hits the floor. Now your right hand is nice to help open that knee, the thigh, the left arm opens up. Now we do the release, the relax, the exhale. We're going to take another inhale, and then as you're ready, slowly come back to the hands being really light on each knee, and notice how your back feels, your hips, notice how everything feels. We're going to be taking a quad stretch next, so I want to offer a few ways. We're all built differently. We might have all had different the days, the last few days, so one way is one arm's underneath your ear and one heel's back. So right here is a great quad stretch. Uh, Betty, good, you've got this other great way. You can use, and um, Susie, you might like your long box to get on because you're kind of between the two. Just see what works. The, the other way I like is on the roller with your knee under. Uh, Betty, that's the one that seems to work for you. Karen, you're good. Your knee, if it doesn't hurt, might be able to drop a half an inch more. But if it hurts, don't. Yep, it did. That was good, Karen. Good. So um, I'm, I'm just looking at everyone to make sure you're queuing. Yep, see if that works today, Susie. If it doesn't, the long box might be a nice one where you kind of tip over, but or the arc. So I also like the one on the ground, but I don't have any knee issues. So I want you to find what works for you. Now we're adding that magical breath. So breathe in through the nose, and this is a great place to go diaphragmatic because the psoas is also getting attention, and that's right there attaching on L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, the diaphragm attaches on L1, 2, and L1, 2, 3, so you can see how the deep breath would help that psoas relax. If your low back's been at all sensitive, this is going to feel great afterwards. Relax the shoulders. Now, you can Gently release, you might notice a difference right away. Uh, I can feel it in my low back even, and mine wasn't tight, so just what do you feel? Now the other side, it could be that you take that foot, it could be that you get on the roller, good Betty, good. You got a little uh, option, that a girl, Jean, that looks good. Your ribs do uh, pull down a little bit so that you don't get in your low back. You do pull your pubic bone up a little bit. I've got a little 5% tone on the ends of my abs, the insertion and the origin of my abs. That prevents the low back from taking the more arch. Now the breath. Belly. This is a sacred time of coming inside recalibrating you with your higher you, taking care of your body, setting a tone for the day of kindness.
take that extra inhale and then release notice how you feel and we're going to touch the hamstrings a moment and if you care to add on a prop I want you to take, take care of you so whenever I offer it the theme is more important than the detail of how it looks for example so the right leg could be in a prop it could be in a Pilates ring it could be in a Dyna band if you have another hamstring stretch that works better for you take it yeah if you need another stretch altogether we're going to touch the angles so the belly is more important to stretch than the knee or the sit bone. So you want to feel a little, uh, also a psoas release if you have that roller. And then we're going to take the leg across. An internal rotation here will get that outer bicep femoris leg uh, muscle. We're going to touch the muscles. You might go out a little bit. So it's an inner thigh, ham or excuse me, inner hamstring. Or if you go out more, it's more inner. Thigh, I want you to just find the places. Enjoy. Like you're a kid on the floor just playing. Love it. Love it. Now as you're ready, we're just going to touch the other side. Now notice that one psoas is getting long, the one on the leg going to the floor. Cross midline. With that internal rotation, it's even more potent. Start heading out a little bit. Listen to your body. Try those deep breaths. Maybe you'll go a little wider for an inner thigh stretch, maybe not. Slowly start making your way towards neutral. When you feel ready, you can take a double psoas. Or the, the foam roller often feels a little bit more supportive when it's near where your glute meets your tush, your glute meets your hamstring. Your low back can decompress. I'm going to place my hands on my lower abdomen just as a way for this easy uh, allowance of both left, right, left side of my diaphragm to fill. The breath is long and slow. Now when you gently release the foam roller, you're going to feel a little release of tension in your back when you go down. Notice how that feels. The upper back is now our gentle focus. This is a thoracic extension. Many of you might like a half a yoga block or a pillow underneath the head or the booty. So I'm going to encourage you to find a prop system that makes your spine be able to relax in an extension with no discomfort in the neck or the hips. So another way is a bound angle here. This is a little uh, butterfly pose. That's a nice one. The upper backs are KRA, our key result area. So breathe in, eyes closed if you want to increase that sensation of feel. Now I'm going into the diaphragm with my breath, but because the rollers on my back ribs, posterior lateral breathing, it's going to have a little bit more of a natural feedback loop. 
so I just felt my left rib cage wasn't getting quite the breath that my right was, so I'm gently, without stress, altering that breath to have a little more focused left rib cage where the roller is, so you might find some information as well. Now with care, you're gonna be coming off and let your back rest on the floor just for a moment. I want you to notice how you feel. And if you wanna stay in Shavasana, please do. If you care to put your feet up on the wall, and I really like a prop with this because of that one more bonus of a decompression of the lumbar spine. It's really nice since our majority of our day we're opposite to this position but just find what's gonna serve you. The breath, you can breathe in to about a count of 10. Now, I don't wanna say that for a stress release, so if you want to, for a stress reason, if you wanna do a little or a smaller number, you can. But my intention is that we're just drawing out the inhale, and the exhale's gonna match that. It's gonna be about 10 as well. It's your own inner count. Now, whenever you're ready, you can release your sacrum from the roller. You can start making your way up towards a seated position or any position that's comfortable for you. I really want you to find your gut, follow your gut on how you need to be. So I'm gonna sit kneeling, but I want you to sit however is comfortable. And we're gonna go belly hand and one hand on the heart and just send the breath. It can be a long, full 10 breath belly. It goes all the way up ribs, all the way up heart. It's also called dirga or three part breath. And then the exhale leaves the same way. It's leaving the heart, leaving the ribs, leaving the belly. Just do this drill wherever it creates some relaxation for you. You might breathe in for 10, belly, rib, heart, and you might exhale for 10, heart, ribs, belly. Now just do it, do what comes natural. And then we're gonna let both hands come to that precious heart. We'll make an intention to notice how good it feels to be well, to feel clarity, sure-footedness, a sense of patience, a sense of kindness. And so today I'm gonna to do my best to stay in alignment with this sense of wellness, a sense of ease, a sense of clarity. And I'm gonna set this dominant vibration so that nothing, no one, no circumstance can, including me, can alter me from this high-flying peaceful state. With so much appreciation to you guys, thank you so much.